Good evening. My name is James Littleton. I am the pastor at both Grace and First United Methodist Church in Texas City. During these unusual and difficult uh, set of circumstances surrounding COVID-19, we are not able to come together as we normally would for Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday as we prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits for the Easter event, for the resurrection of Christ. But instead, we come together uh, in this way as we work through a set of liturgies that have been provided to us by the gracious individuals of Gordon Latherop and Gail Ramshaw of Resurrection Lutheran Church in Arlington, Virginia. Let us now begin our time together this evening as we experience the Monday Thursday. Now, Monday comes from the Latin mandatum, meaning command or order. It refers to the upper room event recorded in the Gospel of John. Chapter 13 begins with a problem. Well, two, actually. The first problem is Judas and the devil in his heart. The second problem is that the normal rituals of hospitality were not performed. So John says that Jesus rose from the table to perform the ritual washing of the feet. More on that uh, here in a little bit. But Jesus says he has performed the ritual as an example to show what love is in this relationship and in this faith. Then Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. The Monday and Monday Thursday comes from this verse. The new commandment is a commandment to love and to love in acts of service and in hospitality. Now, as we begin our time together uh, this evening, I want to invite you to get a bowl of water uh, for yourselves uh, and a dry hand towel. Uh, because we are going to experience for ourselves here in a little bit an opportunity to wash our hands, to, to experience the newness of life that comes to us in the act of spiritually cleansing our hearts and our minds together. For our... Uh, time together this evening, I invite us to take a time to look at God's Word. The first scriptural passage that we'll be looking at this evening is from Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19. Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19, for those of you who want to make a note to go back and, and read it or to follow along with me tonight. Let us hear and experience the word of God. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Our second scriptural passage uh, of the night comes to us from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter, which I referenced in the very beginning of this video in our time together. Again, I invite you to hear and experience the word of God that come to us from John 13, verses 1 through 17, then verses 31 through 35. Let us prepare our hearts as we hear God's word. It was just before the Passover festival 
And Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bad need only to wash your feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done to and for you? He asked him. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. For that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have heard these very powerful words that come to us from the Lord Jesus Christ himself in the Gospel of John. Now at my churches, for those of you who are tuning in from other churches, we are going through a Lenten series right now. Uh, Adam Hamilton, Simon Peter, Flawed but Faithful Disciple. And we see this story, actually, we uh, went through this story this past week where Jesus and the disciples gather around at the table for what we know to be the Last Supper. And as the people, as the disciples uh, and Jesus gathered, they were all sitting there wondering what was going to happen next. Now, it was typical for the host to wash the feet of his guests. This was more than just a physical washing, but also a, a spiritual cleansing that was taking place, spiritually uh, cleaning one's heart to prepare them for acts of service and love to come. And yet, not a single individual, not a single one of those disciples took the initiative 
And so Jesus, the teacher, the rabbi, the one who certainly should not have to do this very job, did in fact do the job of a servant. He humbled himself so that his disciples would know the example to follow for the time that he would depart from them so that we too would know the example to follow. Now, sisters and brothers, I ask you this evening, has there been a time in all of this that has been going on over the past months surrounding COVID, has there been an, an opportunity for you to humble yourselves and show care, compassion, and love for your neighbor? Now, I've heard many wonderful examples. I've uh, experienced things uh, over the last month. I've certainly uh, read about things online of where people are answering the call to humble themselves with great humility to do for others, even at the potential expense of themselves by going out to the store to not only provide for your own family, but also for those who are in need, especially uh, those who are vulnerable. We know that there are people who pick up the phone to call their neighbor and those who belong to the church just to check in. We know there are people who are making great financial sacrifices uh, to assist others in this time uh, of need and who are also still giving faithfully to their respective churches, which I strongly implore and encourage you to do so that we may continue the work of the church in our community uh, during this time of unrest and uncertainty, this time where people uh, fear the unknown, that we may adopt the personality of even Simon Peter, who in his uh, flaws stood out in faith to say, you know what, Jesus, not just my feet, but all of me will you wash. You know, Simon Peter got a lot of things wrong, but he uh, remained faithful even in the midst of great uh, uncertainty and unrest. In times uh, of fear, he stood out and stepped out in great faith. For as an example uh, to his fellow disciples and to those that he ministered to in the early church and even those of us today. And in the process, he became a great and faithful disciple, a great servant. Jesus taught us and prepared us how we may humble ourselves, how we may become servant leaders. I invite you uh, this evening uh, and in the days ahead to pray and to reflect on the ways in which you are able to be a servant yourself. If you haven't done anything yet, or if you're unsure, go to God in prayer or reach out to me and I would be more than happy to help you make sense of what is going on and, and how you might be the hands and the feet of Christ in the world, that you might be examples of love, the love that God uh, talks to us about through the Gospel of John, that we might share the love of Christ selflessly and sacrificially. Now this evening, I invite you to join me as we Take the time to wash our hands, to experience the very real power of forgiveness, the redemption that we experience in our brokenness because we come to God humbly, that we experience 
the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit who is at work in the beginning of creation and is still at work in the world today and will forever be at work. Join me as we take the time to not only clean our hands, which we ought to do uh, during this time of pandemic, but also to take the time to, to clean our hearts and our minds together. I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God, for the church. Gather all the baptized around your presence in the word. Strengthen the body of your people even when we cannot assemble for worship. Grant our pastors and our church leaders, our bishops and our district superintendents, faithfulness and creativity for their ministry in this time. Accompany those who are preparing themselves for baptism. Hear us, holy God. Blessed are you, bountiful God, for this good earth and for the flowering of springtime. Save dry lands from the destructive droughts. Protect the waters from pollution. Allow in this time the planting of fields for food. Make us into caregivers of your plants and animals. Hear us, bountiful God. Blessed are you, almighty God, for our nation. Inspire all people to live in peace. Grant wisdom and courage to heads of state and to legislators as they face the coronavirus. Lead our elected officials to care for the needy all around the world. Hear us, almighty God. Blessed are you, faithful God, for you accompany suffering humanity with love. Be present wherever the coronavirus has struck. Visit all who mourn their dead. Reassure all who have contracted the virus. Strengthen the quarantined or those stranded away from home. Sustain those who have lost their employment. Give courage to those who fear the present and the future. Support physicians, nurses, and home health aides medical researchers, and the World Health Organization. For everyone who is working towards a cure and caring for those who have been sick, hear us, faithful God. Blessed are you, gracious God, for your care for the needy. We ask that you feed the hungry, protect the refugee, embrace the distress, house the homeless, nurse the sick, comfort the dying, especially we pray for those we name before you now. Hear us, gracious God. Receive, merciful God, our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, who died and rose that we might live with you now and forevermore, and all of God's children said, Amen. Now, sisters and brothers, as we depart uh, from our time together this evening, I leave you with the, these words and an invitation to join me tomorrow for our Good Friday experience together. Sisters and brothers, put love above all else and let Christ peace roll in our hearts together go in peace and serve the lord thanks be to god